Hello, Transformation Church. This is Rick Warren, pastor at Saddleback Church on the other coast. I love you guys so much, and I heard that this is your 11th birthday. Pastor Derwin, I love you so much. You know you're my favorite. And don't tell anybody that or I'll have to kill you, but you are my favorite pastor. And I thank God for you. You're an amazing pastor. You're an amazing friend. And I couldn't be more proud of what's going on at Transformation Church. I tell you what, here's the plan. You guys start on the East Coast. We'll start on the West Coast, evangelizing all of America. We'll meet somewhere about, I don't know, Dallas, let's say. And, and then we'll have the whole country evangelized. I know you can do it. I believe in you. Happy anniversary, you guys. I love you so much. Hey, Transformation Church, happy 11th anniversary. And I'm thankful for my friend and my mentor, Pastor Rick Warren out of Saddleback Church. Uh, don't tell anybody that I am his favorite because if you do, uh, he says he'll have to kill me. Rick has an incredible sense of humor and he also makes great steaks and eggs. We've enjoyed that together at his house. But, but happy anniversary, 11 years Old. Now, we're celebrating differently than we normally do, obviously, right? 2020 going into 2021, this has been a, a, a different kind of existence. It has challenged us. It has um, um, done things to us that we could never, ever thought was possible. Who would have ever thought, uh, yeah, I'm living through a global pandemic, and sadly, we have lost people here at Transformation Church as a result of COVID. Thank God for the resurrection. Um, but man, we have had to make a sudden change, hadn't we? we, we we've had to make a sudden change. And, and if you've been around Transformation Church for uh, five or 10 minutes, you know that I use football terminology. And this terminology here, sudden change, it's something that I taught our staff and something that I've taught to our church, and I actually learned it from high school as my high school coach taught me. So as a defensive player, our job on defense was to stop the other team's offense from scoring. And sometimes we would stop them and we would get the ball for our team and our offense would turn the ball over. That meant that they would lose it. When they would turn the ball over, sometimes on defense, we would be tired. We would be exhausted. And so what our coaches drilled into our minds, drilled into our souls was this. When your offense turns the ball over, don't complain. Everybody with one voice say sudden change because sudden change meant, you ready? Adversity creates opportunity. So instead of complaining that we can't rest on the bench, we, we see this adversity as an opportunity. Well, Transformation Church 2020 has been filled with adversity, but it's turned into an opportunity because you have responded to the sudden change. As our other pastors and ministry leaders have shared, 2020 has been the most effective or one of the most effective years that we have ever had. Adversity creates opportunity and desperation produces innovation. Who would have thought that without physically meeting that nearly 500 people would come to faith? Who would have thought that we would have a hope dealer's market feeding and providing 200,000 meals. Who would have thought that so many people, nearly 1,000 people, would be meeting in small groups, being discipled, having community? Who would have thought, not only individually, but collectively together, that God would have done so much? Why? Because a sudden change moves us to understand adversity creates opportunity, and desperation produces innovation. That what the enemy meant for evil, God is using for good. In Transformation Church on our 11th birthday, our circumstances do not determine our calling. For those of you new to the faith, you're checking Jesus out. What does calling mean? Does it mean that God picks up the phone and calls us? Well, kind of, sort of. But what it means is this. Your calling means your purpose. Purpose is why you are. 
So, so, so God, in his grace and mercy, rescues us out of spiritual death. All of us are born spiritually dead, and, and God is a lovesick father, so he sends his eternal son so that he can have more sons and daughters who have the spirit of God in them so that they can join Jesus in loving the world, in healing the world. Uh, the way Jesus says it is bringing Heaven to earth, do on earth as it is in heaven. God literally wants to do that in us and through us as he transforms us. So our circumstances do not determine our calling. In the early church, there was systemic injustice and Roman oppression, but it didn't change the calling of the early church. In the early church, um, there was leprosy, there was cancer, there was poverty, there was, there was all types of broken things. There was racism, there was sexism, there was classism. Sin is not new to the 21st century. Circumstances did not determine the early church's calling and circumstances do not determine our calling at Transformation Church. Our calling is determined by the one who called us. Our calling is determined by the one who didn't pick up a cell phone to call us, but one who came to earth to say, this is what love looks like, and this is the life I want to invite you into. On our 11th anniversary, may we remember, COVID does not determine our calling. A bad economy does not determine our calling. Chaotic racial tension and political divisiveness does not determine our calling. The one who called us determines our calling. We're going to look at an Old Testament passage. Um, it's from the prophet Micah. And this is a famous text where, where God is laying out to the nation of Israel um, his purposes. And, and there's a lot of way to describe God's calling, God's purpose. And here at Transformation Church, through the words of Jesus, right, our purpose, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, upward. Love your neighbors, you love yourself, upward, inward, outward. Well, Micah 6, 8 is just another way of saying our calling is to love God, love self, love neighbor. It is a supernatural act. It is the power of God, it is the power of his grace to do it in us. Micah describes it this way. Mankind, teenagers, boys, girls, people in their 70s, people in their 50s, Young Gen Z, young millennials, old millennials, all of us, everybody. God says this, mankind, he has told you, told each of you what is good and what, is, what the Lord requires of you. Here it is. To act justly, to love faithfulness, and to walk humbly with your God. So on our 11th birthday, let us remind ourselves that our flourishing, that our thriving, not just surviving, that our calling is not as a result of circumstances. Our calling is a result of the one who called us. Individually and collectively, we are called to what? To what is good. On the count of three, wherever you are, I want you to say Tove. One, two, three, Tove. One, two, three, Tove. Uh, Vicky and I were at dinner with a couple that were mentoring, and the waitress's name was Tova. And I said, is that a Hebrew name? She goes, yeah. I said, yeah, Tove means good. She goes, well, how do you know Hebrew? And I said, well, my doctoral work is in first century, second temple Jewish understanding of Christianity, and I dabble a little bit with Hebrew. And so that's a cool name, that your name is Tov, that, that, that it means good. And so as we look at the text again, mankind, he has told each of you what is good because God is good. God wants to call us into his goodness. And let me pause here. If you're new to the faith, you're going, Derwin, but, but there's bad things that happen in this world. Well, God didn't design it that way. God didn't create it that way. What happened is, is you and I through our ancestors, Adam and even through you and I through our actions, bring darkness into light and God is gracious. And he goes, no, no, you're not created for that. You're, you're created for good. Well, what exactly is 
good. What does that mean? God's gonna tell us, but before he does, it's important for us to understand this. We are called to do what God requires and Jesus provides. God is saying, I want you to do what's good, but here's the thing. You and I can't do good. You and I can't do tov according to what God says. Now, we have ideas of what is good, but understand this. God is calling us more to just natural good. He, he wants to give his super to our natural. He wants to take our inability and give us his ability through the power of the Holy Spirit to do good. In other words, to be his hands, to be his feet in this world. What a great opportunity in a world that's been flipped upside down, in a world that is filled with fog, that we can be the calm in the chaos, that we can be the lighthouse in the fog, that we can be the grace in a graceless society. But the thing is, is that God is the one who does it in us. Mankind, he has told each of you what is good and what it is the Lord requires of you. Galatians 2, 20, Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Here is the secret sauce to following Jesus. The secret sauce is Jesus. God doesn't look at us and say, I want you to do good, good luck. God doesn't look at us and say, I want you to change the world, go for it. What God does is God himself comes in the person of Jesus Christ and through his sinless life, through his atoning death on the cross, through his resurrection and the sending of the spirit, Jesus actually wants to live through you. The God who is good becomes goodness in us. The God who is good becomes present in us. The God who calls us is the one who gives us strength to live out our calling. And you know what he's looking for? Not strong people. He's looking on reliant people. We're gonna cover that in a moment. Circumstances don't determine our calling, Transformation Church. The one who calls us lives in us. What God requires, God provides. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Think about that. The one who loved me and gave himself for me. Not only does God love us, not only does he give himself for us, but God lives his life through us. The good that God calls us to is the goodness that he provides to live through. So what is good? Number one, to act justly. We are called to act justly. The goodness that God requires, the goodness that God provides is to act justly. Well, well, what does justly mean? Justice has a beautiful and deep and rich Hebraic understanding that overflowed into the New Testament. Justice is this. Justice is I'm loving my neighbor as I love myself. Justice is I want my neighbor to be treated fairly, and if they're not, I got a problem with it. This is so important, family. Grab a hold of this. Jesus rescues you and I from sin and death and evil. He rescues us individually, but to put us into a family communally. He saves us personally, but to put us in a family collectively. Jesus did not rescue you and I just so we could just care about ourselves. Upward, inward, outward, justice is who has not been being treated fairly as Christians. One of the ways that we draw people to Jesus is if we see injustice, we want to provide justice. Justice is loving my neighbor as I love myself. 2020, moving into 21, is difficult. Uh, one of the benefits of the Charlotte area growing, and I'm sure wherever you're watching from, if your city is large, it's growing. You know, it's, it's cool, new business, stuff, stuff like that. But also, something else that grows, the homeless population. 
Charlotte now has a tent city. I, I think we can take a look at it. That Charlotte now has a city with homeless people living in tents. Now, I want us to take a step back because for some of us, we begin to look for, well, why are they there? What did they do wrong? Well, when Jesus healed someone from leprosy, when, when Jesus healed someone from demonic oppression, when, when Jesus fed hungry people, he didn't go, well, why are you this way? He met them with compassion. Oftentimes, people don't care what you say until they know that you care. And so there are literally people living in tents. Justice means that's unjust. That, that, that's not right. In, in, in the richest country in the history of the world, there's homeless people. And yeah, I'm sure, just like uh, you've made mistakes, they've probably made mistakes. Yeah, I'm sure there's brain health issues. I'm sure there's substance abuse disorder. I'm sure that there's all those things. But here's one thing that I'm sure about Transformation Church. This is not going to happen on our watch. If you're new to Transformation Church in year one, this is year 11, it is the same song that if our community does not change, we shouldn't be here. That if Jesus did not care about justice, he wouldn't have fed 5,000 in the Jewish part of Galilee with fish and 4,000 in the Gentile part of Galilee with fish. If Jesus didn't care about justice, he wouldn't have healed the woman with the issue of blood. If Jesus didn't care about physical needs, he wouldn't have met them. Well, we're called to meet physical needs as a picture of God meeting the greatest need, which is spiritual need. So this is what we're gonna do, Transformation Church. Because of your financial generosity, because of your faithfulness, together, our generosity, our faith, our love of Jesus, and our love of people, we're gonna give $75,000 to a ministry called Roof Above. And Roof Above is working towards ending homelessness and, and, and building facilities. But it's not just a place to house people, but it's to help people with substance abuse disorder, to help people with brain health issues, to holistically help because Jesus is a holistic savior. So Transformation Church, I want to give you a high five. I, I want to give you no, I'm not punching you. I want to give you a fist pump. I want to give you a chest bump. Why? Because you're making a difference. So realize this, that when you give financially, not only is it an act of worship, but it's an act of justice that we are partnering with Roof Above because we believe that Jesus cares about people in need. So well done, Transformation Church. We are called to embrace God's hisset or God's chisset. What, what in the world does that mean? That's the Hebrew word, hisset, chisset. It's the Hebrew word for God's covenantal love. In the New Testament, that word is agape. God's covenantal love means this, that God wants a family, and, and it started with a man by the name of Abram. He changed his name to Abraham, and it meant Abraham means father of many. And God said to Abraham, I'm gonna make you a great nation and I'm gonna give you a land. I'm gonna give you a people. And eventually, all the people, every nation, tribe, and tongue is gonna be a part of your family. Eventually, Jesus comes. He's called the seed of Abraham in the book of Galatians. And God's covenantal love that says, human beings, I'm not giving up on you. I... I am gonna forgive you, I'm gonna embrace you, I'm coming for you, I'm calling you, not because you're good, not because you're bad, but because I love you and I want you and you were created for me. God's hissed or God's faithful love, God's covenantal love, God's agape love is shown most beautifully and most perfectly in Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth is God in human flesh, God the eternal son who embodies God's eternal love. And listen to this. His sinless life was for you and me because we couldn't. That's his hissing. That upon that bloody rugged cross, 
every heinous and dark thing, every hurtful thing, every selfish thing, every sin that we've ever committed was nailed to Jesus. Listen to this. Jesus becomes the place that all sin goes to die. Jesus becomes the place where God's judgment is executed upon those who trust in Jesus. That upon that bloody rugged cross, Jesus bled to not only forgive your sins, Jesus bled to not only make you righteous, Jesus bled to give you a new family with brothers and sisters. Jesus' blood is powerful. And the three days that he was dead, he rose again on the third day to come and live in us, to come and live through us, to tell us that our circumstances do not determine our destiny. Look at this, Micah 6, 8, to love, hiss it. This is chiss it, this is faithfulness. 1 Corinthians, 15, uh, 1 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15, the apostle Paul, a first-rate Jewish intellect and scholar who found Jesus as his Messiah, wrote these words, for the agape of Christ, the covenantal love of Christ, for the love of Christ compels us since we have reached this conclusion that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all so that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for the one who died for them and was raised. So notice, it's not just individual. God saves us individually to put us in a family communally and corporately. So loving our neighbor as we love ourselves is what justice looks like on display in the world. And man, couldn't the world use some love? Couldn't the world use some faithfulness? We are called to walk in reliance on God. Our circumstances do not determine our calling. And to walk humbly with your God. What does that, what does that mean to walk humbly with your God? To walk humbly with your God. It, it means this. <clears throat> Picture when your kids were small, if you have kids. Um, if you're a teenager or a preteen or young adult, picture when, when you were really small. Well, when my kids were small, it'd be about right here. Presley was really short, but she could walk. It was pretty cool. She'd reach her little hand up. I'd put my finger down. She'd grab it, and we would walk together. Wherever I went, she went. We were, we were walking together, right? And so what God is saying is I'm a good, good father, and regardless of the circumstances, I want you to walk with me. I want you to experience the depth of my love. I, I want you to rely on me. And the more we rely on God, the more we rely on the Son, the more we rely on the Holy Spirit, the more we are transformed into the image of the one who called us and says, Transformation Church, your circumstances don't determine your calling. I determine your calling, and your calling is to go into the world and to act justly, to love faithfulness, and to walk humbly with me. That's how you change the world. We don't let our circumstances change us. God changes us in our circumstances so that we can change others who are affected by circumstances. Here's our soul tattoo on our 11th birth birthday. All this week, let's, let's celebrate God's faithfulness. Celebrate how God has been faithful to you in the little things. Celebrate how God has taken Transformation Church from a little old bitty warehouse to all the things that the Lord is doing now. Celebrate him. Here's one of the fastest ways to lose your celebration is to think about the things that you don't have. Think about the things that God has provided you with, namely his son, and think about other things. When we compare also, it detaches us from gratitude. Let us be celebratory this 11th year. And here's an action step. Teenagers and preteens, look for ways to serve those in need. 
Look for ways to serve those in, in need. You can go to the Transformation Church website and you can connect with ways to serve. COVID has not slowed what God is doing down at Transformation Church. If anything, it has speeded up his effectiveness and his power. Transformation Church, I love you. It's an honor for Vicki and I to, to serve you, to be in partnership with you in the gospel. Uh, you are our family. Though I can't be around you physically, we are together spiritually. And we're just getting started. We are just getting started. Will you pray with me? Let's pray. Um, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, thank you for these 11 years. Thank you for the people who've come. Thank you for the people who've gone. They're your people. Thankful. Thank you for this family called Transformation Church that you continue to build. Thank you for the partnership with Roof Above that these $75,000 can go towards housing the homeless, loving those who feel unlovable, giving dignity to those who think they're too damaged. Thank you for your grace, Lord. And right now, before I close this prayer, I'm just sensing that there are several people watching and they're saying, Pastor Derwin, um, I'm inspired, I'm encouraged, but also recognize that I'm not a follower of Jesus. I know about Jesus, I've heard about Jesus, I've dabbled a little bit in religion, I've gone to church a few times, uh, but something different happened. Uh, there was like a door that you were holding on to, and Jesus was knocking and you finally let it go and he's calling you out to himself. He, he, he's calling you to receive forgiveness, he's calling you to receive a new life, He's calling you to receive a new purpose. He's calling you to give your allegiance to him. He is who you were created for. There's no more delaying. There's no more saying, well, next week I'll give my life to Christ. Today on this moment, bow your knee to King Jesus. Pray this with me. Right where you are, he is present. His nail pierced hands are extended. Today, King Jesus, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you died for my sins and three days later, you rose again. I receive your life and I give my allegiance to you for the rest of my life. Amen, amen, and amen. Before our campus host comes on, if you're watching by television, I want you to grab your camera, open up the camera app on your smartphone, and point it at the QR code on the TV. That's gonna take you to our connection page. And you can fill out, hey, I pray to receive Christ. If you're on another d device, the connection card's gonna come up. And I want you to check, I prayed to receive Christ. I renewed my faith in Christ. Why is that important? It's important because one, we wanna celebrate with you. Two, we wanna help you grow in this new life of Christ. And three, man, what a great time to know the effectiveness that God is using Transformation Church to touch life. So please take time to fill that out and to let us know and our team will be in touch.